Moving on to, to covalent bonds. So an ionic bond is when we transfer. A covalent bond is when we share um, electrons between atoms. There are three types of covalent bonds, a single bond, a double bond, and a triple bond. And it's just as it sounds. Single means it has one electron shared, double is two, and triple is three. So in this example here, Carbon is sharing one electron with each of the hydrogens here. That still just makes it a single bond because carbon are the little blue ones and hydrogen are the little red ones and they're sharing their electron with each other and that's just a single bond. So the way we write this, when you write a bond and you're talking about especially organic molecules, which we'll talk about a whole lot more later, a single bond is just a dash between the two. A double bond is two dashes and a triple bond is three. And we're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about like what, how do they do that, but just know that a single bond means they share a single electron, double means they're sharing two, and a triple means they're sharing three. Covalent bonds make up molecules, and a molecule is a structure that results when an atom is joined together with a covalent bond. When atoms of the same element join together, it is also called a molecule. So for example, you breathe in oxygen. The oxygen you breathe in isn't just O, just plain oxygen. It's actually two molecules of oxygen, oxygen covalently bound to one another and we still call that a molecule. So you breathe in molecules of oxygen rather than just the single element oxygen. Van der Waals forces, so this is kind of putting together some, some different concepts and giving you a real world biology connection to what you know covalent bonds are. So Van der Waals force develops um, because there are slight attractions um, between regions of nearby molecules, so in a covalent bonding situation. Um, some molecules will have a stronger attack, attraction for electrons than others. Basically, some, P, some molecules are more, not, not by definition magnetic, but they're more attractive, just like some people are more attracted to others. They woo others over better. So a Van der Waals force can be found in things like a uh, gecko. Um, and these forces are what allow them to climb and to um, stick to various surfaces. And so they have on their feet all these little projections. And they're made up, each projection is made up of a lot of really fine fibers stuck together, which creates a lot of surface area. And because of this, they can climb up walls, across ceilings, and other surfaces that normally wouldn't be possible to climb across. So these Van der Waals forces are just attractions between regions of molecules that are not very strong where they're going to bind and be permanent, um, but it, enough to give, an, give some traction. Um, these Van der Waals forces are also being used to give it a medical um, understanding and frame of references. They have just been developed into a new bandage, and that bandage um, can work on even wet surfaces. So you know how when you put a Band-Aid on um, and then you go wash your hands, you put it on your finger and then you go wash your hands, sometimes the Band-Aid falls off. Well, this Band-Aid works with the Van der Waals forces and it's based off of like the gecko's feet. And it can be used to seal tissues inside that are not necessarily straight. And um, it's also biodegradable meaning your body just breaks it down. So it's kind of like the stitches that just break down inside of your body, but it's, it's more glue-like. Um, but it's based off the knowledge of increasing the surface area, and we have slight attractions between these molecules 
we can um, hold tissues together long enough for the body to begin to heal itself. So that's all for these notes. Look forward to the next one.